Hello and welcome to my first ever YouTube video for Star Trek Online. I've been wanting to make videos for a long time now, but um, I wasn't really sure what to do between the streaming on Twitch and uh, just being around on TeamSpeak. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I think I finally have an idea for my first video. And that has been to answer a question I've heard quite extensively, actually, and it's kind of stems with a DPS question like how do I do more damage but it's a lot simpler than that it has nothing to do with gearing it has nothing to do with how much stuff you've purchased it literally has only only anything to do with how you actually fly your starship piloting is probably the most important thing a player can do in an ISA it is the single largest contributing factor to their DPS. If you, there are some fantastic videos on YouTube um, of players demonstrating some exquisite piloting. Um, that's how some of the big videos of uh, some of the best players in the game with the crappiest gear are able to complete some of the hardest cues in the game. It strictly stems from just piloting ability and being in the right places at the right times to maximize damage output and take care of instances in the queue. Um, while there are these videos that demonstrate ex like just amazing piloting skill, uh, I haven't really found a good video that explains the map and kind of shows from the player's perspective what they should be looking for as far as target areas for flight paths. So I thought that's what we would do. And the easiest way to do that, well, is to hop in ISA. I formed one up, had the had my co-patriots warp out, so we, we have them mapped all to ourselves. And we'll just cloak and fly through the instance. And though uh, I'll kind of give a small breakdown on every segment of the instance. So we have this opening segment. Um, if you do a random PvE queue for this map, you need to be prepared to jump out of the gate and just go. Um, if you do a channel run, uh, I guess the courteous thing to do would be to respect the rules of whatever the run is, is. so if, if someone says, hey, wait for pets or wait for my go, make sure you do that. Um, being a team player is uber important. So, yeah, we're cloaked. Um, so we'll make our way forward. This first, this first instance, this first little combat, a lot of players focus the cube because it's the largest target. It's got 369,100 hit points. Um, but let me present something else to you. The sphere, spheres, for the most part, are kind of overlooked by a lot of players. A single sphere has 295,280 hit points. There are four spheres right here. So if you were to target one and then hit your fi hit fire at will, I mean, you're going to... Your primary target being the sphere, that's three, nearly 300,000 hit points. And then bleed over probably onto that sphere, onto this cube, maybe even this sphere. So especially if your warp in position is probably on one of the edges, you might want to focus a sphere. It's gonna, there's going to be more hit points available to you individually than if everyone just focuses the cube. So once this combat's over, all, all five items, all five targets are destroyed, that pop-up will happen. You can just uh, either hit continue or I just hit evasive maneuvers immediately. That'll take care of that cue from or that pop up. It'll make it disappear. And we make our way to the left side for our first target area. Um, a lot of people don't really understand that there are roles in Star Trek Online. The game, the game does a really good job of making it appear like you don't have to have different roles. Um, but the high end, like high end teams, like a really well formed team with excellent team composition, is going to have different roles. So if your, if the, if your job or if your what you want to accomplish in the run is is to be, I guess the DPS or if you want to be, if you're, especially if you're trying to set a record or something like that. <clears throat> if you have any experience with MOBAs like League of Legends or Smite or Heroes of the Storm, uh, you're going to be the attack damage carry technically. Your job is to put out as much damage as humanly possible, destroy all the targets, have all have all the glory. So the optimal position for a forward-facing build like I have on this Fleet Phantom with DBVs or dual beam banks or even on a cruiser that's a broadsiding beam boat, uh, you want to be square up on the transformer. 
I like trying to be as level as possible with this crossbar right here. Right here. It's not really a crossbar, but this appendage that comes up off of the transformer. And in this position, uh, when I have Fire at Will active, I target the transformer, and Fall will hit both generators in the back, and the sphere, and the cube. My Omnis will hit both generators on the side, and my four other teammates, again, whilst targeting everything on this side of the map, everything will blow up, and uh, it's it should be pretty smooth. Uh, typically gone are the days where we have to follow the 10% rule and have people call generators and things like that. that. While that tactic is still viable and still useful, especially for low DPS teams, not really a thing anymore. Because thank you, power creep. So once the transformer hits about 15%, I actually go ahead and engage my full impulse and disengage to go attack this fear group. Because at this point, fall from myself and the team will finish off the remaining targets and we will engage the sphere group that'll spawn right here. If I don't use Tetri Refractor Tetrion Cascade or attempt to get a GDF, I will typically rock and roll through the sphere core breaches and then evasive maneuver my way back to the right side. Try and maintain that same position, level up with that crossbar. I'm a little low, but square with the transformer. Apply back up a little bit. Your target location, or I guess target distance from the transformer, on both the left side and the right side should probably be between two and a half to three kilometers. That'll allow optimal distance. It's approximately, actually, it'll put you level with the generators. So here it's the same thing. Fa everything, target the transformer. Uh, fa will should vaporize everything. Your teammates will, will also help with that. And then, again, 15% 15, 15 or so on the transformer. Activate those engines, disengage for the, sphere, for the next sphere group. Make our way over here. I typically try to get in between. And it kind of vary. At this point, my tactics typically vary. If there's a really good support in the group and they, and they grab all the spheres, I'm going to lay into the spheres. Because that's, I mean, there should be about six or seven, maybe eight of them. And with fog going, that turns into a very healthy hit point sink. And then after that's destroyed, I typically, I will engage again and move into a better flanking position on the gateway. Uh, flank positions in ISA are a little counterintuitive. Flank positions typically are the rear uh, shield arc on a target. But in ISA, because for whatever reason, the orientation of the transformers and the gateway, and also the tactical cube when it spawns in, puts the um, puts the that flank position on the south side. If we're orientating ourselves, being north facing in, which actually, if you look at the mini map, would actually put it as uh, what is that northeast. So if north if if mini map northeast is technically map north. The flank positions are on the south side of the trans for the transformer of the gateway and the final tactical cube. So once the gateway hits about 20%, I will disengage, fall and the team will keep shooting it, and I will make my way to the flank position on the cube with the final tactical cube. It's worth noting that this little triangle here on your target indicates the flank position so the way this is set up here, with me being on the south side of the cube, notice there is no flank position here. It should be on the bottom. So just to illustrate that point, if I fly to the back side of this cube, that triangle moves to the bottom. I assume that the difference between the cube and the tack cube is the orientation of the players when the cube warps in. Seeing as we face this cube, it has its forward uh, shield arcs facing us, and considering when the tack cube warps in, most players typically are up on the cube. So that would put the forward shield arc on this side of the tactical cube when it spawns in. It's also worth noting that as soon as the tactical cube warps in, typically it will start to rotate and move because it'll basically activate itself upon 
detecting uh, human players. So that triangle becomes extraordinarily important. As soon as, I as soon as I disengage the gateway, I typically make sure I target the cube and find where that flank position is and move as quickly as possible. So that's kind of the basic, uh, basic walkthrough of ISA. Hope that gives you a good walkthrough from at least my perspective of it. So hopefully you found this helpful. Um, I mean, you can contact me on Twitter. You can contact me in Star Trek Online. You can contact me basically any which way. Uh, leave leave a comment on the video if you have a question. I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoyed this first little video, and uh, look forward to making some more.